And we're live. Hello and welcome to another live demonstration. Today's Ash Wednesday, which means yesterday was Shrove Tuesday. So I hope you enjoyed your pancakes. Let Gary know what toppings you had on your pancakes. I have different toppings, depends on what kind of pancake I have. So the American thicker style, I prefer maple syrup and a bit of butter, but the flat ones, that's traditional sugar and um, lemon all the way. What's yours, Gary? Uh, partial for Biscoff spread at the minute. Wow. <laughs> but but uh, lemon and sugar is a standard. It's a, yeah. it's a fairly standard. Yeah. So let Gary know what toppings you've had on. So to, I don't know if you say celebrate, but I'm doing pancakes in honour of Shrove Tuesday. And I have some very interesting facts. <coughs> Excuse me. First things first, I can see there are some areas I just want to sketch out a little bit more because I can't see them. This isn't actually the pancakes I had. This is an image that Gary found for me because he likes the fork on it, which adds additional stress because it's all foreshortened. But thanks, Gary. You're welcome. <laughs> I thought it was interesting. Yes, it's interesting. Um, it comes around here. But yeah, partial to a thicker American style pancake myself. Pump around. Got your top. Okay, fork. We've got some answers in. All oh, right, okay. So uh, Amy doesn't like pancakes at all. What? I know. It's flour and egg and milk, <laughs> I think. Um, uh, Amanda likes lemon and lime with sugar. Wow. Uh, and Pam is maple syrup, strawberries and squirty cream. Now, some people are taking them too. It's another level, that. It is. Three different toppings. Now, I've always been just the sugar... I mean, it's not even white sugar, it has to be brown sugar. Mainly because that's all I have in the house. Uh, let's just etch this so I can see. Right, that's enough. On to the painting, the fun bit. So, limited colours. <coughs> I'm using the Winsor & Newton Artist Watercolour. And... An ochre and a burnt sienna, that will cover most of the colours I need. I've got a sepia, which is the dark brown, which I can use as mixing just to darken some of the areas. And indigo, which will be a colour on its own, but also I'll use it for mixing, especially the greys in the fork. So first colour is going to be this fabulous yellow ochre. Quite thin because it's much easier to add colour than it is to take it away. I'd rather start off with a light base. And I'm going right across here, even though this is where the syrup is going over, because the syrup's transparent, it actually shows the pancakes below. So it's, it's a case of seeing through. Roughly just putting colour on. And this one here. And I will jump around, the reason being is I will want areas to dry before I move on. And in order to do that, I will tend to jump around a little bit. Okay. So. A bit 
of that burnt sienna just to warm the yellow a bit. Dark under there. And the great thing about this is because it is organic, it is made, therefore it's got lots of, well, I wouldn't say imperfections, but nothing is exact. It's really easy just to let the colour do its own thing. Just put the watercolour on, especially with watercolour, and let it move and create its own patterns. It's drying quite quickly, so it must be warm in the studio. So in that wet and wet, you can do wet and wet with the ochre as well, and the sienna. Let that dry. So plenty of water. They have little, slightly folded over here, where they're creased, a little bit darker. Okay. Right, while that's drying, I'm going to, now actually while it's still wet, I might put some, just a bit of the sepia and the burnt sienna just to make a slightly more shadowy colour. Drop it on while it's wet. I don't want it to be too muddy. Quite light there. So, why do we eat pancakes? So pancakes actually aren't something that's in modern times. They actually do date back to prehistory. This flat flour based, cereal based um, food has been known in prehistory, ancient Egypt. Rome, ancient Rome, all had a form of flat cereal based cake, I suppose, <coughs> or bread. Um, substance, so not new, but tradition is that you would use up all of your eggs, milk and fat. So dairy and meat were forbidden during Lent or are forbidden during Lent. Depends how closely you follow it now. So in order not to waste food, 
you would use it up by creating pancakes. Let's put this burnt sienna on. So Shrove Tuesday, pancake day. Shrove comes from the medieval word for shriving, which means to confess your sins. So church bells would ring and you'll be called to a mass to confess your sins before Lent and pancake day or shriving day is 47 days before Easter. 47 because they didn't include the weekends. So yeah, 40 days and 40 nights is the representing Christ in the wilderness, but they, they're not including the weekends. So that's why there's 47 days between Pancake Tuesday and Easter Sunday. Okay. This under here. Burnt Sien is a fabulous colour. It's the exact colour I need. Um, what else do I know? Pancake races. So the story goes, the bells were ringing to call people to mass on Shrove Tuesday and a woman rang, <coughs> heard the bells, excuse me, and forgot she was cooking her pancakes or using up her fat and meat and so ran into church still with her apron on and carrying her pan. So this was in a town of only I think in Buckinghamshire and it's still celebrated today where they do a pancake race through the streets and they have to wear an apron and either a scarf or a hat. And that was in 1445, something like that, if I remember rightly. First actual recipe written down in a book was about 14 something as well. Now, I was looking up, out of interest mainly, the differences between a crepe and a pancake. A lot of it was to do with the French crepe is very, very, very thin. And I think pancakes have a rising agent in them. But other than that, there's not much other than pancakes are traditionally eaten as a using up the food so that's what they're for but you can eat them any time and crepes are an everyday dessert in France this style pancake is more of the American style the much bigger fluffier style which to be honest I will eat with maple syrup and butter very similarly to you can see in this picture I'm just going to go around here just so I remember where Line of this syrup is. Just up and over that lip there. 
goes in make this bit around here and then it goes over the butter okay. but you can see why I've painted all the way through just so Given the idea that the syrup is transparent. Need a little bit more ochre because I didn't fill in this fully. Right, a bit more. The thing about burnt sienna is it's quite a transparent colour so it does drop back. And I like my colours quite bright. But a bit more layering. Again under there. Because it's where the pancakes are stacked. Brush was getting a bit spiky there, and that's because it was getting a bit dry. have to be neat and flat. It's great to add texture. Right. Okay. This should be dry enough just to allow me to add strong enough some of these creases that you can see and put some of the again take that through put some of these little Pockets of holes that you get in. Text, bit of texture. I'm going to keep building up layers because I did start quite cautiously that's because I didn't want to over colour at the start now I can neaten and put a few more clean edges in Of water. So under here is going to be a little darker. Through here is a bit darker. And actually, this goes behind that fork and that. It's actually quite dark under here, a bit more red. Right, I think I still need to darken here a little bit more look at that once you just put on a little bit of depth it just brings it together keep that lovely 
red-orange colour of the burnt sienna. Same here, it's just using a bit of the sepia just to darken, but it's mostly burnt sienna. And remember it goes across. Same here, it's actually syrup. It's on top of the pancake, so therefore would be creating a shadow. Go on this edge, dot dash kind of technique. Here, a bit of a dot. Under here is obviously going to be darkest as well because you've got a big covering there and here. It's a bit darker. Around this edge. flat. I can create a flat area with the um, syrup because that's going to be smooth. I think I can take this back actually again. So oak is lovely because it is actually a lifting colour. You can lift it. It's not overly staining. So if I've gone a bit too keen I can lift it back. I need to let that dry before I go back in. Right. While that's drying, I'll move on to the butter. And I was trying to remember why I'd put white out. I remember now. It was not just for the possibility of needing it for the syrup, um, which I might do if I forget to leave areas white, but it is actually to mix with the ochre and create a butter colour. So now that's an opaque colour which is perfect for this butter. Yeah. And the butter comes through, where's the butter come through? Here. Just comes out the top there. A bit of shadow underneath. And using this opaque white. Which also shows that I haven't finished this bit of the Pancake. What's that? That's syrup. So let's start with the syrup because it should be dry enough now. Again, it's going to be a case of layering. But as you can see, Burnt sienna is actually quite transparent. It's just allowing the colours to show through. Like that little 
after those lights come through there. So got a little bit of a drizzle there and then this is quite comes across here around here. That's actually a bigger bit of the butter needs exposing, but I can do that. Go. So all I'm doing is I'm looking at the shape created by the syrup that I'm seeing. So <clears throat> I'm putting on some of the, <coughs> excuse me, usually you can work light that way but actually what I'm doing is I'm putting on some of the darker areas because they're the key sh shapes and then just up there is a bit stronger A little bit there, and then again, it doesn't have to be smooth, just let it dry and see how the paint actually works for you. Stronger there. I'm hopefully going to do most of this syrup just using this one colour. Should give me enough. Different tonal values. May need at the end to add some darker areas to it. But and again, just like the ochre, it is actually a non staining colour, which means I can lift it. I'm not doing the drizzle, that it's, it's coming down on the original. Work my way around, see where the darker edges are, just at the edge there. And you've got this pancake coming through there, which I can darken. That's coming through there. So you can see how it's dropping back. So just keep working my way around a bit darker here and that's kind of that shape it's all to do with shape not necessarily and how the light is creating Darker, so let's go back into this again. What's happening here? That needs need some colour. I might use some of the ochre just to pick up some of the underlying colour and fix that so I know where this is, this is the butter there and it's actually some just in there 
Right. So let's keep going because it's dropping back now. I can add some of that sepia, some of that burnt sienna. And carefully, it's more burnt sienna than it is sepia, hopefully. See how that's made a darker brown? If it's on too strong, lift it. much darker on this end. Yeah. All the way up there. Quite a nice dark patch there. Like I say, you can lift it up because there's a couple of patches of light here. And actually, I find lifting out is a really good technique because it doesn't always lift out totally cleanly. That's what we put it there. Um, so you still have a hint of the burnt sienna colour underneath, but it lifts out enough to suggest light. Right. Brush. One thing this is, is it's got a smooth edge, so I need to smooth that off a bit. Shadow under there. Definitely a little bit more here. This is And it in. See how nice that is to be able to lift off. So you can faff a little bit. But the lifting technique is perfect to Add and manipulate the shine. I think that needs to be stronger there. Right. Giving me enough depth just there at the moment. Let's make sense of this. I 
had quite a lot of fun when I tried this previously, just this manipulation of putting it on and lifting it off, which you would think that was counterintuitive, but it just helped really build up that shine. Let's look, it's gone a little bit muddy. So, let's clean it up a little bit. Might be with that colour a bit more. I managed to go a bit too muddy on here. Just not too strong. Fairly neat now. edges are pretty defined and strong. Take it through, take it through. I could add white on top, but I did find that it wasn't as successful. It just kind of grayed it a little bit. So lifting out and blending. There will reach a point where I've gone too far, so I'm going to stop and fix this bit down here. Because I'm probably finding that I'm avoiding doing the fork. Let's, let's get onto the fork, let that dry, I can come back to it. So I've got some indigo and some burnt sienna. This is going to make my beautiful grey. These are great colours. So I always find burnt sienna not only is a great colour to have on your palette. I know I usually say red, yellow, blue, but I would add a burnt sienna. It's a colour that is just so useful on your palette. Then mix with the blue. I mean, try it with the different blues. You'll get a really nice grey. Again, this is a case of putting it on lightly to start with, clean edges. much easier to put it on lightly and lift it back than it is to add a lot of colour on to start with and find it's just too strong. This is 
a metallic object, so therefore I'm going to need a bit of clean line, which for me is hard and challenging because I just like organic shapes because then you don't have to really worry as much. Get to go smaller brush. Again, that's something a little bit more unusual because I prefer a big brush to put colour on. But this is a fork that's foreshortened, so I do need to make sure that I am a little bit more careful with the shape of it because we don't want it won't have fuzzy lines. It it is a metallic object. Again, I also want to avoid outlining the shape as well because I want to achieve the shape through the tonal values without actually outlining everything. So the colour is at the bottom. Colour on, clean brush, damp brush, and I can move it up. Okay, and the same here. Move it around. Four times on this fork. So, three, clean that back, see how you can clean back. I don't find the indigo a overly staining colour, depends on the pigments and if it's got phthalo pigments in it, then it will be um, much more staining colour because phthalo blue and greens they're quite staining. Right. I don't think this indigo has because it allows you to lift. Okay. Right. Stronger now. A bit too blue, so add a bit more brown. Colour on, blend it out. Bring it down. Just strip across there. Actually, this is the darkest. I didn't say, but I'm using Bockingford. Um, I think it's the 535, the heavier weight. Mainly because one of the last things I'm going to do is the background, and that's going to be quite wet. So I didn't want it buckling. Just not good with straight lines, Gary. Uh, sorry. <laughs> right, under here. That. 
Softfilm blenden. You can see the 3D part of the fork as well, they're not completely flat. The forks have some depth to them. I'm just trying to suggest. Still need some dark under here. They're not straight. This is a good time when you would put it on and walk away because I know I'm probably going to get over fussy with this. I, I don't have the luxury of time to be. So we might just end up leaving it. I like that colour, let's put some in here. Mm, not too bad. I think I'm missing a little bit of colour here. And this actually goes up. There. Right, let's straighten, do a bit of straightening, which will involve a little bit of outlining, not much. Like I said, I don't want to create solid outlines. But is there any way I'm going to straighten? Keep re-looking at the original. I think that fork has come out of line a bit. But what I'll do just Straighten it up by doing that. Let that dry and I'll come back to it. I'm not going to walk, work on that anymore. Just a couple of touches on here. Because I find now this is dried can add a couple more layers and that will bring it together. It won't be as Anita. Yes. Got a question for you. Okay. From Pam. Hello Pam. She says she's got some SAA gold and silver that she's not tried. Could she use those of course you can. the syrup and the fork? Would you, that work? Yes, you can do whatever you want. It's your painting. So I think they're both they transparent it says so yes of course you can it would just add some sparkle so the gold and silver have that additional um bit of mica in there to make them shimmer and shine that's suddenly bringing it together just these tiny little details. That's what I was missing. That's a little toss. Some 
connect the dots here. Roll my brush in order to um, keep the point. Did I tell you about the Ashbourne football? I can't remember if you mentioned the football, you mentioned the races. Yeah, the pancake races using the pan but they're not sure when it dates back to but some countries some oh I forgot about Mardi Gras as well some towns in the UK have a tradition of a it's called a football match but not necessarily using their feet to kick a ball said to date again from 1400s when a group of boys were seen kicking and having a match or some school couple of schools um had a match on the tuesday and i know ashbourne in derbyshire they have it's called shrove tide football match it's very well known uh, royalty have thrown the ball or turned out I think it's called turning out the ball um, three miles between the goals and it's played by people who either live at the top end so they're uppers or the bottom end and they're downers um, of Ashbourne and they have mass number of people it's not don't th I think there were no rules as part from no murder or stabbing was allowed originally <laughs> to get a ball between mills. Um, now the mills aren't there, but the stones are. And actually to make it even harder, they've put the stones on the other side of the river. So they have to wade through the river um, to score a goal, three miles between goals. And the winners, I think this goes on for a, quite a long time, and the winners are the ones that have the most goals in that set time. Right, let's put some colour on. Big brush, plenty of water. Oops, clean water. Now, if you've ever watched when I've done this before, it doesn't actually matter. I often will tint the water because I can't see it. So I will tint it just so I can see where I am putting the water on the page. Not actually touching the pancakes at the moment. because I can go back in. I'm going to create a vignette that actually comes down here and around. So you, you are wet in the background, but you can actually control where the paint goes. So hopefully the paint will flow only in these wet areas. So around the dish, I'm actually being quite careful going up to it because I want the background to go around the dishes white. So I'm not touching the pancake because I can push it into that, but around the dish, because I want a clean edge, I'm actually pushing the water up to, and because the dish is white, 
darker the background, the whiter the dish. Fabulous colour. Look at this. does the job for me. It's actually great colour to use with the burnt sienna. And this is where I can control where it goes. Because I hadn't put the water up to the pancake. Great thing about watercolor, it does half the job for you. I might put it a bit across there as well, just to add some color. There you go. Just do your job. So bringing it around. And big brush, I can actually, so this is wet on dry. Bring out the slight edge. Probably not strong enough, let's go a bit stronger. Pancake on something. Tip around here and let's go under. This is where a big brush is. Really good for nice clean lines. Fork is also sitting on something. This is where I can clean up that edge. Just dip in here. And the shadow will be just a bit darker there. Go stronger. Oh, that's nice. Again, a bit stronger here. Define that edge a bit more and under here. You can't see it as much, but no, don't go wonky now. It does have a dip there but I don't need to do it all this is sometimes you just suggest is enough and again it's just I think this needs to be sitting a bit stronger here
definitely a bit stronger. There. Big brush now, I can do a bit of finishing. And I still need to do a little bit more on this syrup, but not a lot. What I need to do is lift out a little bit more, just clean up. some areas make it sparkle a little bit more look at that I love this bit because actually it really does bring it back I know it's getting dangerous. It is getting dangerous. It is getting dangerous. Just a bit, a bit more. Strengthen this shadow under here. I'm not even going to put any white on. I think. That has done. Gonna have to stop me in a minute. Gonna have to stop, aren't I? I mean, you, you are in danger of fiddling. I am in danger of real fiddling, but. Right, I'm gonna stop, gonna stop, gonna stop. I'm going to stop. So, you do run the risk of carrying on fiddling. So, get a nice clean line and then you put another brush mark. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. And yeah, I'm still looking at this and really want to pick up a brush again, but you, there are times when you have to say no um, and walk away and come back and then possibly be allowed to work on it again. But I hope you enjoyed that. That was um, to celebrate Shrove Tuesday, which was yesterday. Um, and join me again soon. So thank you for watching and join me again soon for another live demonstration.